Thanks Good to see you, Mark. Yeah, thanks for coming. Oh, thanks for having me. You had a ridiculous 2008. Paper Towns came out. Yeah. Hailed by the critics. Yes. Loved by teenagers and adults all over the place and librarians. Uh, Mostly librarians. You started running a script. <laughs> you started writing a script for Paper Towns. Yeah. Looking for Alaska, your first book is going to be made into a movie. Yeah, probably a bad movie. Really? Well, okay, yeah. that's fine. You had too many friends on Facebook. They told you True. no more friends on Facebook. That was the accomplishment of the year, really. I mean, every the, the New York Times bestseller list and everything that can that that they they can take that away from you, but they can't take away from you having too many friends on Facebook. If I can get off of Facebook, that will be the <laughs> the thing of the year for me. Anyway, I'd, I'd appreciate it because then I could have a new friend. <laughs> you know, every time. Yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of people sitting in the sitting in the wings. You know, you had 983 I'll friend tell you requests. what, tonight I'm going on and I'm deleting you from my friends. That actually kind of hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so what I wanted to ask you was, you've had all this success this year. What's it been like emotionally for you? Um, uh, pretty much the same. <laughs> uh, which is what? Uh, which is sort of medium. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's, it's astounding how uh, how little, considering how much uh, time and, and energy we all spend thinking about how if one thing happened or if one more thing happened, then we would be happy. Yeah. It's, it's astounding how wrong we are about that. I mean, I always, <laughs> you know, I, I always thought that if I, if I had a book that people liked, that then I would be happy. Mm -hmm. And I am happy, but mostly because I like my wife. You know, it has very little to do with... I think I'll be happy if I can just get a new couch here. This couch is getting so, so I, ratty. I mean, so I, I think this is, this is sort of the cornerstone of the show. I mean, you... <laughs> I, of so course, I should leave? Well, you'd like to think that it's about you, yeah, but I... It's really I mean, I, I think that without the couch, you've got nothing. Well, every time I have to bring it up afterwards, and every time I break another piece of it. <laughs> Pretty soon I'm going to have to bring it down in pieces and put it back together. Yeah, but well, that, that brings, leads me to the next question. There was a survey you filled out. I think I read it on Facebook. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it asked you, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you said, I want it to be this, but I pictured it differently. But you yeah. didn't answer how you pictured it differently, which left everybody hanging. And now I'm here to <laughs> get you to answer that. Uh, well, when I, I mean, when I was a kid, I pictured, I, I didn't think about the business side of writing or any of that or I just you don't about have to sell your books you could just write and I don't have to but yeah. then I then I um, wouldn't be able to pay the mortgage That's so true. I mean the, I didn't think about the balance that that there is between the the work that I love and then having to uh, back it up also I think like a lot of people I really like uh, starting something mm -hmm. but then doing it it's awful <laughs> you know <laughs> Is that why your novels are pretty short? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, enough already. Someone asked me that recently. Like, a kid emailed me and asked me, did you rush through the end of Paper Towns? <laughs> and I was like, I spent three years writing the book. Like, you don't think I, like, looked at the That's end a couple horrible. times? <laughs> That's really mean. I mean, Yeah, they don't know. I wrote, I wrote a column about a year and a half ago that was kind of a satire. I won't go into the full details. It was but very funny. It was very funny. And uh, some teacher in Aurora assigned it to her sixth grade Whoa. class. And now I have all these sixth graders emailing me and asking, yeah. what did I mean? Was it supposed to be funny? <laughs> <laughs> I like it best when they, don't, uh, when, when they don't say what they mean, when they're like, what would you say the themes of your novel Looking for Alaska <laughs> are? And I'm like, oh, I'm sure you're just curious. What, what's, well, that, yeah. was, that was my next question, actually. <laughs> yeah. The last time we talked, you were being chased out of Buffalo, I think it was. Yeah. Were you, what happened? Did you get back in there? I was being, my, well, my book was being, my first novel was being, Looking for Alaska was being taught in a uh, curriculum in, in, in a high school in Buffalo, New York. They didn't, somebody didn't like the cut of my jib. They didn't like the fact that I, I acknowledge that, that blowjobs are something that happened in the world. Uh, it's true. Um, your books, I mean, your books, if they were made word for word into movies because of the arcane laws of whatever does the ratings, would probably be rated R. At least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I, but, 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 uh, but the, great thing about, the great thing about books is that we, we don't have that. Right. Um, and that we're able to see things in their proper context. And in the end, uh, I, I, my brother and I have this video blog, and we have uh, this huge force of people behind us mm -hmm. who are extremely well organized. And so when this little town in New York challenged looking for Alaska, 7,000 people wrote wow. letters. Wow. Uh, 
and they got terrified. And the one, one the one member of the school board who was going to vote against against it being in the curriculum didn't show up to the meeting. <laughs> And it's nice, you know, usually uh, teachers and librarians have to have to feel like they're suffering alone in this, yeah, and, yeah. and they, they're the ones who feel like they're alone, and it was nice to make the person who would uh, challenge intellectual sure. freedom to be scared. <laughs> you know, John's not kidding. He's got, if you're 16 years old, you probably either like Miley Cyrus, maybe self-mutilation, or, or John Green. Yeah. And he's got uh, so many... I mean, I have to say, those, those Venn diagrams touch in some places. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's, not, it's not, not just an or. <laughs> but listen, I mean, he is so... Let, let's show the... Can we show the slides? You don't have to turn off the lights for this. But John is so popular that I wish people you are... done this. People are making artwork of John Green. <laughs> let's go to the next one. That's him and his brother. And yeah. the last one, I don't get this last one. Yeah. That's John as a hamburger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always saw you as more of a... Well, I don't want to... That, that, well, I put on some weight since I left Chicago. <laughs> um, well, let's talk a little bit about... Explain to me who the nerd fighters are. That's a group of, of your fans. Are yeah. They, are they people who fight nerds or nerds who fight other people? Yeah. I mean, obviously, they're not fighting nerds or they would, be, they would kill us. Right. Uh, no, my brother and I have this this video blog on on YouTube that's become quite popular, and our our fans are called Nerd Fighters okay. because they fight. They're like freedom fighters. Okay, you know, they're for nerds in the okay. same way that freedom fighters are ostensibly for. And freedom. they ident and you identify yourself as a nerd. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I I identify myself as a nerd, and then also so does everyone else. Uh, I mean, pre pre me identifying myself that way, I was informed by other people. <laughs> I feel like I was like five years too late on that. Like if really? I had been in high school when nerds were cool, now nerds are cool. I was just a nerd. Not, 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 not that cool. No. No. I mean, you've you, got you'd 7, be surprised. You've got seven people challenging the Buffalo Library. What could be cool? Well, no, 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 no. They, yeah, but like they're also nerds. What, what the internet, what the internet provides us is that yeah. instead of it just being our high school, which is unbearable the world becomes larger than our high school. So instead of there only being two or three of us in each high school, suddenly there are 60,000 of us. <laughs> uh, and I mean, you know, thank God I've That's got, true of everybody. That's true of... It's also, it's, uh, it's right, it's also true of, you know, fans of ping pong. Right, right. Yeah. Which, of which I am of one. Of which I am one too. Yeah. See? <laughs> and well, let's talk a little bit about the book, Paper Towns. I could explain it, but I'm sure you'll do a better job. What's the... What's the book about? I grew up in Orlando, Florida, and Paper Towns is set primarily in Orlando, and it's about a kid who uh, lives next door to this. In fact, uh, my friend Nathan Rabin is here tonight, and he invented, he works for The Onion, and he invented the phrase Manic Pixie Dream Girl, okay. uh, which has become really central to uh, the way I talk about Paper Towns and also to the way I imagined it when I was writing it. Um, this kid, Q, lives next door to this Manic Pixie Dream Girl named Margot Roth Spiegelman. And if you don't know what a Manic Pixie Dream Girl is, then you're a girl. Um, but a Manic Pixie Dream Girl is the, uh, the, the, the beautiful, um, quasi-impossible presence who enters one's life, changes one's world, and then uh, m disappears mysteriously, uh, which is more or less what Margot does. Q and Margot go on this insane all-night adventure through the streets of Orlando, Florida, and then Margot disappears. Um, the rest of the novel is spent sort of searching, trying to discover what, Q trying to discover what happened to her. It seems like she's left clues mm -hmm. in her copy of Walt Whitman's Song of Myself that are directed explicitly toward him, um, which is the typical Manic Pixie Dream Girl thing to do. Um, the Manic Pixie Dream Girl, it seems to me, is like a profoundly dangerous lie. When you imagine someone as more than a person, it's just as dangerous as when you imagine someone as less than a person. And, and uh, what I wanted to do in Paper Towns was to sort of uh, stab a stake in the heart of that lie. Well, you write, the fundamental mistake I had always made and that she had, and in fairness, always led me to make was this. Margot was not a miracle. She was not an adventure. She was not a fine and precious thing. She was a girl. I mean, it's almost like we set that up before, Can but we didn't. we didn't. We didn't, yeah. That's how and that was your next I card. I have a card for every single passage in the book. Wow! <laughs> But yeah, that is precisely the point. I mean, th th this is something that Q comes to about two thirds of the way through the book. Is 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 the reason that what what makes it so difficult for him to find Margot is not or to discover what's happened to her is not ultimately that she has made it difficult. It's that he has failed to imagine her as a person. He has mm -hmm. all this time been imagining her as this fine and precious thing. Now.